you don't mind uh, turning your Bibles to the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans 12, verses 1 through 2. Uh, you all are probably pretty familiar with it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. These two verses from the Living Bible reads thusly. And so, dear brothers, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living sacrifice, holy, the kind he can accept. When you think of what he has done for you, is this too much to ask? Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think then you will learn from your own experiences how his ways will really satisfy you. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Rome at this time of much upheaval. It was a time where not following the norms that had been established could cause you to suffer extreme punishment. I like the Living Bible's take on Romans 12 verse two. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but be a new, and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think. Then you will learn from your own experiences how his ways will really satisfy you. I personally believe that Romans 12 verse 2 tells us to stand out in society. We will stand out for sure if we don't conform to this world. If we don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, we will stand out because so many are conformed to the norms of society. Stepping outside of the norms of society will cause you to set, stand out. Now that's good, but there's also some bad. Your decision to stand out will cost you some attacks and some headaches too. So on this morning, I'd like to preach to you, it's worth the headaches. Look at someone and tell them it's worth the headaches. It's worth the headaches. I find it hard to admit that the decision to not conform this to this world will cause you some headaches. A decision to stand out and not conform to this world will definitely cause you some headaches. I might as well be honest with you. When you stop walking like you used to, when you stop talking like you used to, and when you stop living like you used to, it will set someone's temper to boiling. Your decision to not stay one of the pack one of the clique and one of the club will cause you some headaches. Fighting the sheer weight of conformity is an awesome task in the first place. Conformity molds many, but don't allow it to mold you. Don't you be another one of society's clones. Don't you be another member of the gospel rat pack. Some won't like you because you just won't fit in. Despite all of that, I will still boldly declare that it's worth the headaches. Transformation is our goal. Transformation has its place, but transformation also has its price. When you try to bring a fresh newness into any arena, you will encounter some resistance. God hasn't called any of us to fit the norms. God hasn't called any of us to average. God hasn't called any of us to mediocrity. God hasn't called any of us to the status quo. The amazing thing, saints, is that God has, hasn't called many of us to fit. God has called us to be the light of the world, and that's headlights and not taillights. As believers in Christ, we shouldn't fit into many of the places that we used to fit. Transformation is worth it. What butterfly wants to stay a caterpillar? Who wants to stay a tadpole? Who wants to stay the borrower? Who wants to stay the tail? Who wants to stay beneath? Ask your neighbor, do you want transformation in your life? 
There are some areas in each one of our lives where transformation needs to take place. Transformation does come with a price. Saints, only what we will do for Christ will last. Why conform to keep everyone happy and risk causing the anger of God to be directed at us? There are some times when God hasn't called, hasn't called us to stay out of the way. There are some times when God hasn't called us to just chill. There are some times that God hasn't called us to relax. And there are some distinct times that God hasn't called us to be comfortable. The question of the hour is, will we risk being uncomfortable? And will we risk the headaches that come along with standing out for Christ? Saints, I'm boldly declaring that our bold stands for Christ are worth the headaches that come with any bold stands that you take for Christ. The world doesn't take boldness like it used to. The world now wants us to be soft and amiable, for we are now living in the day of the 13th place trophy. What the what? 13th place? What the what? The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Rome at a critical time, and I'm sharing this world at a critical time for so many. I know it is for me. We're living in a time where the church has to fight the mood and tenor of this day. The pressure to conform is probably at its greatest level since this text was first written. I'm bringing this word to what I think is an end time church. I believe that we're living in a moment that the Apostle Paul was speaking of in his letter to his uh, son in the Gospel of Timothy as echoed by the words of 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 5. Paul wrote, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. We could do that back in the day. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Now, now we could be disobedient, but you lost some teeth in the process. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers, of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. We look holy. We smell holy. We know all the holy moves. We know I got a holy pose. We know how to say holy. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. I do believe that we're now sitting squarely in this moment. The days that we're living in are not just some simple walk in the park, but we are living in perilous and dangerous times. We don't know nowadays what a day can bring. I never would have thought I saw Will Boyd's picture at 2 o'clock on the face of Booker yesterday, never thinking that he would be gone in a couple of hours. We hear stories now that we thought we'd never hear. The scary thing that the, is that the stories that we hear daily are real. We're now watching horror movies in real time, and it's now called the news. Who would have thought that we would hear what we hear in our day? I, 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 y'all got the right to have all y'all pit bull pup, puppies and y'all rocks, but keep them away from the kids. That broke my heart the other day. And it could have happened to anyone, but come on now, you got to get the dogs. If they killing everything in their path and y'all fighting them, keep them away from the children. And I just couldn't even picture how fierce that would be. Every day on the news, a new tenor is struck. You hear something that you thought you would never hear while you were up. You have to pinch yourself to believe that I'm really living and I'm hearing this. Yeah. Our day has so much heat and carry so much pain that we ask when and where we can get off of this gospel train. Yeah. Fear not, my brother. Hold on, my sisters, because the transformation that's coming in your life will be worth the headaches. Romans 12 verse 1 calls us to doctrine and duty. It calls for dedication of our total person, and it calls that our and, and calls that our reasonable service. Yeah. Romans 12 verse 2 calls us to transformation. Tell your neighbor this, I'm calling you to transformation. Yeah. I'm calling each of you to transformation. The transformation that I'm speaking of will cost you some peace of mind, and it will cost you some headaches, but it's worth the headaches. Transformation is a change of form, fashion, and lifestyle. First. 
1 John 2, verses 15 through 17, record the following. The writer wrote, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abide it forever. Don't get caught so caught up in conforming to this world's systems. Conforming will cost you also. It'll cost me also. Stop fitting where you were never meant to fit. There's a cost for that too. God's calling us out of our torrid love affair with the world and the things of this world's various systems. Are you bold enough to stand against the things of the world? I also hear the writing of Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 through 19. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory of his of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us with who believe according to the working of his mighty power my brothers and sisters in Christ there's an exceeding greatness of God's power that's pumped and prime for those of us who believe according to the working of his mighty kratos. That's, that's power in the Greek. In this text, kratos of God's incredible power. Saints, as we, as we believe we have an inheritance, do you believe you have an inheritance? Yeah. So it's written, the glory of his inheritance in the saints. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Jesus is my heavenly big brother. God is my heavenly father. And the devil ain't no kin at all. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a king's kid. Weeping may have endured in your life, but joy is coming on this morning to you and yours. I'm praying on this morning that God gives us all the revelation and the insight where we can realize that it's worth the headaches. Saints, I'm telling you that it's worth the headache. It's worth the headache. It's worth the stomach ache. It's worth the ear ache. And it's even worth the back ache too. I, I had to put Deborah in there. I had to put her own in there. It's worth the back ache. It's worth the back ache. I hear Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 verses 17 through 18. For our light affliction. And we were just talking about aches. But this is what Paul called them. Our light affliction. Which is but for a moment. Working for us a far more exceeding. An eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen. Don't get so focused on the circumstance. On how it appears. Don't it ain't You don't have to go by what it looked like. But at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. That thing that you're seeing right now. It can change. If you can see it, it can change. I don't care how bad it is and how bad it looks. If you can see it, it can change. But the things which are are not seen are eternal. Those aches are about to pass. All of the trials that you're going through are about to pass. All of the suffering that you're going through is about to pass. Saints, it will be worth the headaches. So let's go walk to the beat of a different drum. Etch you out a different path. Make a choice to stand out and stand out big. Make sure that you no longer fit the pattern of this age. Stop making yourself to fit the wrong patterns. Don't dance to the schematic of the world. Stop choosing the world as your dance partner. Your watch shouldn't match the clock of the world. Let's renew our mind and prepare for supernatural change. True transformation is supernatural change. Saints, when we truly change, that's when our lives undergo a metamorphosis. When our minds become renewed, then our circumstances will do the same. I feel transformation on your trail this morning. You may be driving the same car, but I see you new. You might have on the same clothes, but I feel you new. You might have the same old house, but I hear you new. Saints, your change will be worth all the headaches that you've had. 
through metamorphosis will be worth it all. God's going to make you stand out. God's about to take you out of the packs and out from among the fray. God's going to break every chain in your life. Freedom is about to be ours. Hope will once again be ours. Healing will once again be ours. Deliverance will once again be ours. There's a powerful change coming your way. I so hear the words of the Apostle Paul from Romans 8 verses 16 through 18. Paul wrote the Spirit itself, bearing witness with our spirits that we are children, the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. of Christ. I'm bringing this word to you that we may also be glorified together. Paul wrote for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Things are about to get better. Things are about to get brighter. Hold on. Our help is on the way. Saints is worth the headaches. It's worth the pain. of this world, in the mess of this world, don't you dare fall, don't fit into the pattern of this world, take the pain, feel the rain, embrace the stain, tolerate the change, there will be consequences, but standing out in this world, embrace them all, because there's a pain they coming. Self and the heathens 
right there in room 202. Thanks to God. Making your business on this morning. And we got a walk to different way. Saints is worth the heavy. The prize is too great for us to focus on the price. I want to make it to glory. I want heaven to be mine. Show everything that you've been through. 